based on the committee that we expected, um, and you two were the only uh, elected officials at RSVP, so I don't know of anyone else coming, so we'll start and improvise. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start with uh, public comment, if you have anything to say. Um, uh, I don't think I'd be considered public I okay. elected official. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What, what is your name? Uh, John Cotton. John okay. Cotton. I'm uh, a trustee of okay. Smith Book. Okay. Thank I'm so. surprised my partner in crime is not here. Okay. Probably will be okay. yeah, when he finds a parking space. Okay. Um, well, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, if there's no public comment, we'll move to the, uh, the Q&A uh, with elected officials. And I think most of our questions are going to surround or have to do with the part-time elected officials. So we'll be sincere. The only full-time elected official will let you go first and okay, uh, sure. have any questions. I, have no, I, I don't have any questions. I'm do you have to, uh, if we have any questions? Yeah, yeah no, questions. absolutely. So. Go, go right ahead. Okay, well, do you, do you have any comment that you'd like to make um, about? No, not really. I, I guess if, if there was a decision made as far as um, the salary, um, that I would hope that that was not going to, your decision was not going to be based on uh, the next municipal election. Uh, for my myself, because the charter does not state that it has to be that way for m myself, only the mayor and the council. So um, it would just definitely be a um, ordinance change. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're you're debating, you know, you're deliberating as far as uh, any salary for myself, okay. because elect because all of the department heads have already received a um, you know a, an increase in their salary already. So. Um, you know, whether it, I think it's a 1% that they got, um, you know, where I'm kind of like in, in no man's land because I have to wait for the um, compensation board to make their decision and then decide how you're going to go forward with that piece for myself as the elected official because it's not spelled out in the charter. Okay. Well, I think our understanding is that we're going to make recommendations to the council, council? and then the council can take it or leave it. Okay. Um, so you'll have an opportunity okay. just to speak to the council. Um, Great. That's do all. you have, um, in terms of your salary or the salary of the city clerk in Northampton, do you have a history of that, or when it's been changed, um, when the last... The year? last one was changed, um, I think it was, uh, I want to say a couple years ago. Okay. And it was, it was, oh, it was changed because I was taking on the duties as the registrar of voters. Um, and I wasn't, they elected not to give me a separate stipend, but they, and um, they felt that I was one of the only department heads that was left that didn't have a salary increase when all the others did. So I was... I was, you know, systematically lagging behind in um, in my salary. I was one. I was one, second to one of maybe there was maybe one other person that was lower than I was as a department head okay. in salary. Okay. So there, there was an adjustment. There was a yes, years ago. a couple of years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you know, with me being elected, which which I you know I have no qualms about being elected whatsoever. So don't you know don't get me wrong with that. It's just that I, I have to either wait for the um, city council um, because the mayor can't arbitrarily give me a raise. So it's either he has to go to the council and request that through a, through an ordinance. So. Um, we'll be casual if you guys have questions. Just yeah. step in. I was going to say, so you're kind of in a dual role when you, in that you, you're elected, but you're also considered a department head. It's kind of along the lines of other department heads, but correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. I'm then the department head of the city clerk and also the registrar of voters and the elections, if you want to throw the elections in there as well. But that's, you know, that's the role that I play. Do you think the salary is adequate for the responsibility no. of the position? Yeah. What do you think would be a suitable um, I'm not for you, yeah, but yeah, for the responsibility. You know, I, I think that that's something that this committee needs to go out and look at uh, comparable communities um, and their responsibilities. I, I can certainly say to you, yeah, I, I would love, you know, $70,000, but that's not going to happen. So I think, you know, it's best for you to do, go out and look at comparable communities. And I'm talking about cities. Do not look at towns. Towns are totally different. Mm -hmm. And we, we've had, I had this discussion before um, when we were doing the charter and, you know, when they were looking at comparable communities, you know, population-wise. But 
but job-wise, it's totally different. A clerk versus a, a city clerk versus a town, totally different. Um, you know, the city clerk, um, just for instance, when you're with vital statistics, okay, and I'm talking birth, death, and marriage records. Most towns do not have a birthing hospital. They don't have the nursing homes that we have. So we are responsible, like I'm responsible for making sure that I disseminate that information to those communities once it's processed in my office. So, I mean, those are, you know, those are just the things that you need to keep in mind when you're looking at the position that it's really you're looking at city clerk versus town. Well, that, that's helpful. We are doing a lot of benchmarking, um, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's a that's a nuanced um, right. issue that we'll take into consideration. And you know, so. as well as you know, um, my assistant has taken on the responsibility of the city assistant. council. Yeah. Um, so that is another piece that's back into my office. And of course, my office did it for years. So you know, uh, when she has a question or a concern, you know, she'll ask me. I try not to. <laughs> to be part of that, I'm trying to keep myself separate from that because I really, I was very clear that I wasn't going to be the backup for city council because I had enough to do. Um, so um, when when you're looking at it and you see that there's the city council umbrella in there, um, I, I I guide her, but I'm not part of that that position. You know, she's taking that on herself, so that's not part of it. Can I make a comment? Sure. The other thing I would suggest you look at is the whole organizational structure, how much help. Because I've watched Wendy now, I've been on city council for over 10 years, and how not only does she have more responsibilities happening, but the staff, how much staff does she have? And my impression is it's less and less. And so therefore you also have to look at that. And anybody who's ever worked with Wendy or the clerk's office, everybody in there is incredible. And they are full out all the time. And you know when I start when, when I started we had um, three people in my outer office where I was physically able to go into my own office and do the work that I needed to do as the city clerk and department head through budget uh, no no fault of anyone else but budget issues it ended up jobs systematically as people left the jobs were not filled. And so it became a point where my department ended up with myself and my assistant in a city, in a city, just the two of us. And I had two girls over in the registrar's office. Even though I have cross-trained them on some things, but they still have a responsibility in that office as the registrar of voters, and they have a calendar to meet by, through the Secretary of the Commonwealth. And if they don't meet it, they're going to come after me. So they have a specific job to do. We're right in the crux of the state primary. So I have you know, all of that to do. I spent two days in court today, you know, yesterday and today, in court for the, the bid um, and testified you know, because they're, they've sued the city. Um, you know, so I mean, all of that. You know, so when I'm gone, I have my assistant there, and and I will say that the mayor was very gracious this year and gave me a part-time position, and so I have filled that part-time position. And Amy is wonderful. She's learning. She's got a, it's a huge learning curve, but she's doing well. And um, but you know, she leaves at 12:30. You know, if I was able to have her till 4.30, it would be great. You know, if the money was there, it would be wonderful. But, you know, that's not the case. And so it makes it difficult. I've now become clerical. And not, not, only, not only the city clerk department, I'm clerical. When I'm waiting on people at the counter and they're saying, the city clerk, you're, you're, you're waiting on me at the counter. Well, yeah, that's, that's part of the job. You do what you have to do to get the job done. So. And how, how many people report to you directly? Four. 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 Kind of makes you want to dance, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back your point a little bit. Any other questions for Wendy? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for asking yeah. me to appear, yeah. and yeah. Good, good luck on your. This very hard job. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's hard because you can't, you're not going to make everybody happy. I mean, it's kind of like the charter, right? <laughs> it's kind of like the charter deal. You're not making everybody happy there either. But thank you very much. Well, thank thank you. Yeah, no problem. Next. Before you, before you go, yes. how many times have you sworn at me? Here? Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you,
So I looked at, okay, so you have the council meetings. Two council meetings a month. You have committee meetings. Every councilor now is serving on three committees. It used to be councilors were serving on four committees and occasionally three. Um, you go to public forums, and then there are other open public meetings. This is all the work that's not involved with your ward. This is just what's involved with the city. And I looked at, I went back and looked at how many public meetings were posted. You know, meetings like when we were talking about the storm water, or when there were meetings, you know, where there were, so for that one, I was very engaged in that, so I was at a lot of public meetings. But even so, when I looked at this, I looked at all of these meetings, council meetings twice a month, and I averaged them out at six hours a month. Committee meetings, there's three of them. That's about six hours a month. I'm being very generous because most committee meetings are about an hour and a half. There are some that are longer. So I'm being kind of on the generous side, saying the job takes more time. And I've done that all along. So six hours of council meetings, six hours of your committee meetings, public forums, you know, average out to probably about one a month on public meetings. And I'm going to say those are two hours. But then I threw in other public meetings, which I'm saying there are three of those a month. So those are so that the other public meetings would be like stormwater task force. So that wasn't a listed kind of city council sponsored meeting. You put all of that together, just your meetings a month, 20 hours a month. And I'm saying this is 12 months of the year, which it's not because July and August are pretty sparse. So I'm being very generous saying that five hours a week, you take the 20 hours a month, you take, divide that by four, so again, I'm being generous, I'm not dividing it by 4.2, whatever. You come out with meetings being five hours a week of your time being at meetings, and that's generous. Then you have the other part, which is your ward work. And that's where you have a wide range. I tend to, I have, up until this election, I had the smallest ward. We just evened that out at, at the next census. So perhaps I did have fewer calls. But I do have a ward that tends to have in ward two a lot of people who feel very entitled to be heard and to get their way. So I'm not sure, it's been said in the past that our ward isn't as active. So I'm not sure, it could be. But even so, if I were to say that I spent nine hours a week on board stuff, taking constituent calls, or say ward meetings, like at the Y is in my ward or at Smith, that would be enormous. And I'm only saying that because if I take all of this, which I think is way more, you're talking about 14 hours a week of work. And that would be extremely uh, a liberal interpretation. Now, I, I'm saying that because there are other counselors who have said to me, oh, this is a full-time job. I've never had a full-time job that's like this, that's 14 hours a week. I mean, one council said, I don't know if I could run again. Now I, have, I already have a full-time job. This is another full-time job. And I just really question that because I'm telling you 14 is a lot. If you think about it, you can say nine hours a week for phone calls from your ward or meetings in the ward. I mean, even on some of my busiest weeks, maybe I'll get five or six calls. Maybe I'll get five or six calls. Maybe I'll have two meetings. So I'm coming here just to say that side of counselors, that I, and I'm not running, by the way, I'm not running again, which is one of the reasons I think other counselors, I'm, this is it, I've announced it, I'm not running, which is why I've talked to a number of counselors, they all know I'm not running. I've asked them, you know, many of them feel awkward about coming in and Either they're going to be working with other counselors who feel they should be paid, you know, huge amounts of money or whatever, or that they're going to come in and say, we work 30 hours a week. But I'm going to, I have the freedom to just tell you, and I, I, right now I'm the only announced counselor who's not running again. Um, I think, from my understanding, is almost, I think everybody else is. And um, so I just wanted to come in and share that with you. That is very subjective. Um, Todd started campaign. Yeah. <laughs> I just asked a question. I'm curious. So, what is your sense of why people have this feeling that it's a full time job? Like, what because, is that about? Because I think so, I, there are a number of reasons. One is I think some people make it their job, full time mm -hmm. job. They don't have other things to do. This becomes their identity. Um, they're a city councilor, and that's just, they love being there. And they're really engaged to a level where it's beyond the job. 
I mean, do you really need, if it's, are, your presence is every meeting is not required. You also have to learn that when the same people come to the same meeting over and over again, you don't really need to be at every single meeting. You don't need to come to, I did because I was one of the key people involved in the Stormwater Task Force. So I got to see this firsthand. Stormwater Task Force had a meeting in every board. You did not have to come to every board's meetings. We made the same presentation. We had the same people saying the same things, both pro and con, at every meeting. You'd think you'd learn that after the third meeting. But there's some folks who just, part of it is, there are some folks who eventually want to run for higher office. So that's to their own benefit. They want to be with as many people as possible. They see even going to things that are like fundraisers that have nothing to do with the council, they're adding those in. But again, that's because they want to be known. That's different than the job. If you're deciding I want to someday be you know, the council president or I want to be the mayor or I want to run for whatever, that's a whole other ball game. That's uh, up to you to decide. And then there's the personality piece of just some people just really this is where they have their social life and everything else. Not that many. I actually would say that the figure I'm giving you of 14, I would, my, again, it's very subjective, but I would say two-thirds of the council would fit there or below. And that when I first ran, there were two, comp two people who had been on the council a long time, who when I asked them how long, and this is Fran Volkman and um, um, what are My Michael Barsley. And Michael and Claire, because Michael was the president, I said I thought I would meet with him. I wanted to find out what's the job like. And both of them said the same thing. They said probably about 10 to 12 hours a week. That's what you should come on, 10 to 12 hours a week. And that's your experience. That's been my experience. Yeah, and I'd say that's, again, on any job, if you think, well, I'm not really doing that in July and August, and there's a whole period around Christmas, and there are other very slow periods. Is it really ten? Or, it's ten or twelve when when I'm on. You know, not during the summertime, but really starting in mid June, even things really start to slow down. So being here tonight bumps up your average. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm planning on staying here for hours. <laughs> Paul, the um, during the charter. Um, process, uh, there was a public meeting where people came and spoke about compensation. Um, and some people stood up and made the argument that public service should be its own reward and there should be little to nominal salary. Other people got up and said, no, this is a very important job and we should we should uh, pay a very generous salary to attract everyone. Where do you fall in Probably that Probably somewhere in the middle. I think, I think it needs to pay enough that somebody who wants to do this who is already working that this is enough for it's it's enough compensation for them that they might have to take another job or to you know because they need that it should be enough compensation that there is that incentive if you are being paid something but I'm not so sure that it's you should be paid generously for doing this job for example I think the job I don't think it pays even the combination uh, I think the combination right now for me, I have a family, health insurance, and a $5,000 salary paying me, I would say that's $17,000 for the job. I'd say, yeah, you know, that's probably, that's probably right on. Maybe I could see going up a little bit more, but I wouldn't see a dramatic increase. Where you're, you're, I've heard through the grapevine from some of my fellow counselors, well, maybe you should go up to 15 or 20. I'm not saying you guys have even looked at that as a figure. But to me, that would be extraordinary because then with the health insurance, you're talking about a job that's this amount of time, paying twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. That's very highly compensated. So, would you say that the council president, on average, works more yes. than the other? Yes. Yes. I would say that the council president does work considerably more. Considerably so, more. Can you just detail that? Because yeah. they don't serve okay. on committees, so but they, they have don't serve on committees. But the council president, for example, on three key issues that I've dealt with over the last three years, even though I have been the point person on the council for that, I've constantly gone to Bill Dwight to both both talk about strategy of how we do this how an ordinance should be written, as the person who's, he meets with the mayor talking about the agenda, I am calling Bill all the time, and I think you multiply that by seven. Um, and I, 
probably tend to, to do that less than other counselors because I've been there a long time and Bill and I serve together so sometimes Bill will say, well, you could just go ahead and do this. With newer counselors, I think he's had to do much more work. So I do think, number one. Number two, many times people will both email and call the counselors at large with the president his office. So you've got the council president, who is, in my experience, has always been a counselor at large, but may not be. So you've got the fact that our current president is a counselor at large, and I do think that those two folks work more as well. Because someone will email me, and they'll always be cc And if I don't give them satisfaction or don't feel I've heard them, they go call Jesse Adams or Bill Dwight. First of all, they'll complain about me, and I have to listen to all of that, <laughs> and then they can also talk about the issue. How often, in an ideal world, how often would salaries for uh, council members be adjusted? Well, yeah, this is I'm something you have to. Me. Or let me let me let me just rephrase that. Is there? Do you think it would be sensible to have some sort of mechanism yes. that would automatically adjust salaries, given the fact that you guys have to vote on it? And that's inherently. Yeah, I think there should be some mechanism for doing that. It feels it feels difficult to vote on this because in times with with you know budget crunches for that and I've been there since I've been there for more than ten years. We had the same salary since I've come there. It would be very difficult to vote our own raise. You know, it's different if it's coming from a compensation committee that has a broader scope to it. Um, and to put some mechanism in there I think would be helpful. I also can I comment on one of the sure, things? Sure, sure. I also do know, so I don't want the school committee members to jump all over me, but Relax with that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the school committee um, definitely does not do the work of the city council, nor do you get the calls of the city council. They will on certain specific issues, but it's not ongoing. I have often thought, so if you, I think that the current ratio is not correct. I don't know what it eventually will be, but I don't think paying Five thousand to a city councilor and twenty five hundred to a school committee member. I think that's a little out of whack. What would you think uh, more appropriate ratio? Would I don't be? know. Oh, well, the ratio itself, yeah. maybe uh, so the two, it's two, two thirds. Two thirds. Maybe it's two thirds to a third. Well, it's already that's two to one, which is the current. You're right. No, I mean, what? Yeah, it would be six thousand to two thousand. Two thousand. Okay, so three. Yeah. Okay. Three. Do you, in your opinion, no, I, you could trust me. <laughs> I'm just wondering, in your opinion, if you think it would be fair to pay the council president or the council president and the at-large councilors more than the rest of the council? Absolutely. They, they, they currently are. Aren't they? Are they? I think 7,500. Um, I think at-large is 7,500. I don't think so. The, uh, my understanding is it's 5,000 for the um, councilors and 10,000 for the president. It's a, no, oh, maybe, maybe, can, maybe it's just the president again. I'm confused. Five thousand for council, fifty-five hundred for the council president. And the at-large council. And the at-large. Same as the board council. I think the at-large council should be. Yeah. And if you do, I think you do. You do more work, so that you may have to have something where the the president gets a certain amount more, because the president does not have to be at large, and the at-large council gets a little bit more. Just one thing politically too, I know you don't take this into account, but to run as an at-large counselor, so you're gonna run for re-election, costs you a great deal more money. So it is a position that, again, that's not the actual work of the position, but in order to run for that position, you have got to raise considerably more money than to run for any of the council seats. Yeah. Yeah. So one question I have that I've been struggling with is I, to my mind, I think there needs to be an, a greater number of indicators used to evaluate the salary rather than just economics alone. I wonder if there are any other indicators you could suggest that we might take into consideration. You did mention that we're a unique city. Oh. When you say economic indicator, do you mean what can we afford? Or no, other than looking simply at salaries of other cities, are there other indicators? Social indicators, cultural indicators, something else? That we're no, I think 
one of the things to look at is how are they structured? How is their committee structured? What are their subcommittee structures like? Like here, we're all serving on three, three committees. Is that true in other small cities? Is that how that operates? I don't know. Kind of like what I was saying about Wendy's job. You have to look at the organizational structure, that she's working a lot. I know that all the time. And because she lost one person in her office a while back. Um, for example, one of the things we do here is, like, you guys having to take your own minutes. It's a pain to have to do the minutes because that's that adds a little bit to the workload. So when I, you know, I want to be chair of the committee because the chair doesn't do it. <laughs> it's easier to be the chair. Um, so I would look at that structure, the committee structure, and look at uh, the other, those other kind of parameters and specifics about how often they, the council, their council meetings meet, how long they go for. Um, you know, even though I said, and I still believe this, we're talking about 12 hours a week. Our council meetings tend to run long. That may be, you may find in other small cities that they run even longer. God forbid, but that might be true. And part of that is we have a be part of our structures to have that three minute opening session, which sometimes can run for an hour, hour and a half. I mean, our council meetings can go and have often gone from 7 o'clock, we're sitting there until 11.30. Um, and I'm not sure how that is in other cities. Um, if I can just clarify, I think the, the issue she was getting at was we're looking at, at benchmarking um, elected officials sort of throughout the country. Yeah. Um, and most of that comes back in economic terms, in terms of comparable salaries and also size of town, population, family income, things like that. Are there any qualitative measures of Northampton that you think um, should inform how we pay our elected officials? Given that we have bike paths, for instance, or the quality of our school, should that feed or inform? You mean we're doing a good job? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're doing a bad job. Or do, you think, do you think, is there a way in your mind, as you've served and thought about this, are there certain factors out there that aren't, uh, that should be informing the way we compensate elected officials? I don't know. I'd have to okay. think about that. Nothing comes to mind if you have any kind of examples I could comment on, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, for instance, there's um, there, it's limited data that, that we can turn to. Not many people have looked at yeah. the qualitative indicators of communities. And so I look at um, access, you know, proximity to locations, access to parks, public parks, um, the walking score of a community versus you know, different. No, you're talking about cities. for the whole community. For the whole community. What's the quality of the community? Mm -hmm. The quality of life in Northampton versus other quality of life. And so how would that, have, just explain to me how that would change or not change or your views about how the counselors would be compensated? I like to look at indicators that are more closely aligned with what I would think an elected official has some responsibility for. So measures of, of school quality, for instance, um, is one indicator. All right, so if you take it, so that's what I was saying. If that, that's what I was not understanding. So you're saying, well, okay, let's supposing in Northampton, we have, we're off the charts. Great schools, bike trails, all this incredible stuff. No one even comes close. Would that mean you then look at the council and say, maybe these folks deserve more money? It's, it's a question I have because we I don't know yet. Okay. We don't know. All right, so, okay. So, uh, yeah, and I don't know either. And I don't know whether that's how you judge it because some of that just is, who knows if the council was responsible for some of that. But if you are going to look at some of those, one of the ones recently, which I think the council was directly responsible for, is that we were just named, you know how the energy, you saw also how we were rated the first city in the country to get the five-star rating. That was directly related to eight years of work that the council and a committee, an offshoot of the council did. So if you're going to evaluate the work of the council, I would evaluate the work of our council extremely highly. But I work there. So um, <laughs> don't, you got to ask somebody who doesn't. But I think given, given what has happened, if you look at other cities and towns in the Commonwealth and what has happened, not just in the Commonwealth, but throughout New England, over the last decade, in terms of the economy, in terms of what's happened in terms of federal budget cuts, reflected in state budget cuts, reflected then in cuts to the city, simultaneously cities and towns being asked to do more, required to do more by law. I don't know that you're going to find another town that's done as well as we have. So from a 
a qualitative standpoint. I think we've done amazingly well in terms of our governance and in terms of how we have handled an incredibly difficult budget time, which continues to this day. Mm -hmm. So I guess just matching it to other, I, I would say, what other town in Massachusetts would you put us up against that? That's in kind of our, you know, you could look at some place like Concord and Lexington, but they have a very different demographic than we have. In your experience, and I'm sure over two years you've benchmarked and tried to make comparisons, what towns kind of come up or cities come up as good comparables to, to Northampton? Well, of course, Amherst comes up as, a, as a, a comparable town, meaning some town to compare ourselves to, and I compare ourselves to them and I say, thank God we don't have a town meeting. <laughs> you know, and David Musanti is incredible. David used to be here, so I worked with David way back when I first came in, and they were lucky to have him. But I think having <coughs> a council structure and paying our counselors has, uh, I, I, I'm just really glad we're not Amherst and going through the kind of some of the struggles they go through. And yet, you know, I think they're also a comparable town in that they do great things and they're a good town to live in. Um, uh, is there a is there a city or a town with a comparable government structure, i.e., council, mayor, um, that you all that I look towards, or the, the council looks towards and says, "This is what our sister city is doing." And we really don't. I don't, and we, I'd be curious to see as you look through if you guys come up with some that you say, "Oh, there's a kind of comparable town," because I don't really know what those those towns would be. Either their demographics are so dramatically different whether it's, a, say, a town like Holyoke, but it's larger. But they're operating very differently because they, are, they get so much more money, and I believe they should get that money, for their schools and other things because of their economic situation. So they're operating very differently than we are, with very different rules of the game, especially for funding of their schools, which is 50% of our funding. Um, as, or they, as I mentioned, they don't have a town like Concord or Lexington, which is a, and a very different demographic. Um, so well, I don't really know of a town like specifically like ours. Well, one of our charges, in, in addition to the council, we're, we're charged with looking at the, ma the mayor's salary as well. And they, you know, he's not here to defend himself, I suppose. But but just you know, how do you see the mayor's salary? Considering that, you, as you mentioned, you've you've had a lot of experience on the council. How do you too low? And we had to fight with the former mayor, with Claire Higgins. She did not, there was a small group of us who used to talk with her all the time about kind of just political things. And she did not want to raise the salary of the mayor. And we basically convinced her finally said, it's not about you. This is about this position. And you're only going to be mayor for a little while longer. Because again, it's very difficult politically to ask for a raise or even accept a raise. But I think given, now there's a job that I've looked at these two mayors, they're doing a job that's 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Um, and they're always on. And they're on when they're on vacation. And that job, and again, I don't know what you've seen in other cities and towns. Maybe we pay more. But I, I don't think that job comes close to the compensation that it that Do you have a compensation figure that, um, in mind for what the mayor should be earning? I mean, we're doing a lot of benchmarking, but that's just sort of gravitating around means and medians. Is there a figure? Um, we're on tape in minutes. I have to. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's a little bit. <laughs> Any other questions for Paul? Yeah. Well, thank you again for doing this. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Y'all want to take it together? <laughs> hey, Paul, get your hat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Good evening. My name is Mike Dale.
able to educate and bring in people that would be interested in vocation and where they could work with their hands, their head, and, and earn a living. And so what the Oliver Smith will did was to buy land uh, for a campus, uh, put buildings up, and have three elected overseers to provide uh, the information and guidance to make this all come together. So over numerous, you know, since 1844, uh, every two years there's there's an election uh, for people to serve on Smith School. So consequently, what happened with me personally is that uh, a gentleman by the name of David Bourbeau was on the uh, board and he was chairman of the board. And, uh, he passed away cancer. So when that occurred, it was opening on the board, and the fellow trustees uh, put my name forward, and the city council put my name forward. So I was asked to serve the balance of the term of David Borbo, which I did uh, because he was a great gentleman, and I was happy to succeed him and help with that. Well, the unique thing was when the election came up, I had a brother, and his name was still on the ballot because he expired, but all the ballots had been done, and the timeliness is that David Borbo was still on there with John Cotton and Tom Fitzgerald. So I had to run on stickers. So it was, I mean, I have to say that I hope people voted for me for having some knowledge, but I also had the Caitlin name that my dad was the uh, first two term mayor of the city of Northampton, so I did have a little bit of recognition, and I was elected, and, uh, and it was uh, <clears throat> with my history. I was a student there, and, and uh, for out of body collision repair, I served on the advisory board capacity for many, many, many years. And then I had the opportunity to actually run for the trusteeship. So my dad was on the board when he was ex officio being a mayor. My brother John L. Jack Haley was on the board in the 70s. Uh, he has since passed on. So I'm living a legacy of, 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 of serving Haley as well as Smith Vocational School. But as this gentleman, in, in terms of the work requirements, uh, Paul sort of outlined how, how much time was required to perform the job. Can yeah. you sort of talk us through that? And, sure. and also maybe end with you have thoughts about what an appropriate compensation would be. Um, yeah. That could be helpful for the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the stipend that I received personally, to speak of myself, Paul talked about having insurance. I have insurance, but I pay for it. So the $2,500 that I get from that stipend all goes to cover my, my insurance. So you you are taking the, the city off the health insurance. insurance. That's correct, and but I pay for it. And the 20%, um, I guess there's a copay of with the yep. policy. Mm -hmm. So all of that then goes to pay your, your copay. Correct. Okay. So, uh, this is not a money making deal. This is, uh, this is a matter of uh, in, in the amount of hours that initially, when it first came on, there were, you know, as Jack said, we go in and we sign the warrants and we, we just check in with the superintendent is there anything you need? And, and, and basically, that was the, what we did in the initial part. Then, when we hired the superintendent, there was a lot of hands-on meetings to do all the interviews and everything like that. The process has changed because of the growth of the school and the demands on the administration of the school have changed. We have a very reliable staff there at the present time. But as Paul said, some people make the job their job or they just go off. I'm a hands-on person only because of having a large business background that I can see 
what is the best thing for the school in regards to so in an advisory capacity as chairperson, I work very closely with the superintendent to implement things that are, are good for the school. So hours, uh, I'm at the school uh, 20 hours a week uh, because at different times, and, and they could be in a one hour capacity, they could be in a five hour capacity, but it's, it's what needs to, to make sure that, that it's all about the students, all about the school, all about the changes that we've just implemented over the summer. Uh, if you go down Locust Street, people consequently will call us and say, how come the cows are not in the field? Because <laughs> they look for them. Can I ask you a question? Great so this is a hard one, but I'm just going to be honest. So you're saying you're a real hands-on person. Clearly, you do a lot, and you, you know you really care about what you're doing. Yeah. Well, let's just take you out of the picture for a minute, and let's yeah. just put someone in there who's following the charter of the will yeah. and the expectations. What would their workload look like if, you know, they were just doing what they were required to do? didn't have the heart, you know, and soul right. that you're putting into right. it. What What would your expectation there would be, be? There would be two meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. a month mm -hmm. uh, during during the regular year uh, we we can make a call of whether we want to meet during August mm -hmm. we, we didn't uh, so every for the rest of the time those two meetings those meetings run anywhere from uh, an hour to an hour and a half but we have a secretary uh, Deborah Car Carver that prepares all the meeting mm -hmm. uh, agenda so we have everything placed before us we have five people as trustees there's the three of us and with Tom Fitzgerald and there's the mayor and there's the superintendent of the Northampton school sits on our board so there's five of us that meet uh, and we we do a regular introduction to the public to let them speak we have the trustees speak and then we have a full agenda that we go through and then we have business reports from our business manager financially. We have the report from the superintendent in regards to what has uh, happened in the school for the previous period of time. And then uh, if we're going to have to get into any kind of special things, then we actually, you know, go into private session to handle those. So over, a, you know, a, a, let's say an 11 month period, the normal person who just walked yeah. in and walked out the door, yeah, it's two do. meetings a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and normally they would meet ahead of time to, uh, because of, of uh, we can't, the three of us can't meet uh, because of legality. So mm -hmm. it'd be two and two in regards to going over the things that need to be done. Uh, or the mayor and, and the superintendent of the, of the Northampton School would meet and add anything <coughs> to the agenda uh -huh. that, that they thought should be brought up. So uh, the normal kind of in and out person uh, would, would probably only put in the two meetings and maybe uh, six hours a month uh -huh. that, that uh, they would answer phone calls. And, uh -huh. Or okay. do things. So, so the two I, meetings, I would say two meetings that's a plus, I'm sorry, two meetings plus six additional yeah. six hours? Correct. Okay, so that would be more like nine, you think, total? Nine. Correct. Um, and how much time would, would it ordinarily take to do the warrant? Well, that's very, what happens, the business manager prepares that, so our job is to go in and review it and, and then sign it so, uh, for payment. So the budget that's a big time of the year that we spend a lot of time mm -hmm. preparing the budget and getting it ready for the city and the mayor in, in covering all our departments. Uh, mm -hmm. So that at that time period, we, we would spend an exorbitant amount of time to, to review the budget. Does the business manager um, spend time along with that as well? Does he, uh, yeah. does he prepare that? Correct. Yeah, so that's her full-time job. We have a full-time business. Yeah, uh, one thing I'd like to point out, if you uh, wish to see a school like Smith School, you won't find it. We're the only independent school in the state of Massachusetts. In fact, it's good at some points, it's bad at others.
Yes. Because when they do something for the regionals, that's one. When they do it for the cities, that's two. They guess it in the middle. So we sometimes have a little problem. Ms. Brower is the superintendent of schools according to the will. Again, this is not a change in any in the will as for the The will itself states there are three people. And though the actual name of both those three people is the superintendent's special as a will. So actually what we do as a trust as a trustee group, we change the name. Is we hire a superintendent represents us. So uh, that uh, brings it into the normal uh, realm. But we have uh, a different governance. We have uh, issues at times with the, with the city. And uh, we work those out. So not only are we playing, oh, I use the word playing in the wrong sense, I suppose. Uh, we're playing with the state for some things, and we're working with the city for other things. And in between that was the Smith Charities, which gives us a small stipend every year. So, you know, to get the funding. But again, uh, all three of us, uh, I work every day. I drive for a coyote. I'd say at least four out of the five days of the week I saw school before I get taken to work. For the simple reason, I got to make sure the, you know, the, the, the stuff has been signed or whatever. Or, and I can say it, he won't. But I was also the chairman for uh, a number of years. Uh, Mike has the unique attributes that we need at the moment. And that's why he's here. He is. I'm more the teacher of uh, teacher hour on the board for that. And by the way, have you had a raise in the past 10 years? I haven't. So I'm just trying to put that. And uh, Mike does yeoman duty when it comes to the political aspect. Well, my background is more with the teacher aspect. And Mr. Fitzgerald's background is not only the only somewhat in the state, but he loves to farm. So that we all have our own little niche that we, we work in. And uh, when you put us all together, it's the point school. And that's what we're all at. So uh, it's just the way things work. So at the moment, uh, Mike is, uh, is working with a committee with, from the uh, uh, Department of Education. sent their students to us that they elected that, that wanted to come to the Smith's Vocational School, some by agreement, some by just being sent by the city of Northampton. And then 
the city of Northampton didn't want to pay for it, meaning that they figured, well, you know, Smith School is part of Northampton High. No, it isn't. Smith School is its own entity. So there was always not a route, but there was a, always what you could call a spirited discussion about, you know, who's going to pay for it and how, how's this going to be covered. Well, when Claire Higgins was there, she used a methodology of, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a new boiler for $50,000 for the school, but I'm not going to pay you for 50 grand worth of students. Did we get paid? Of course we did. But did it show up on paper that we got paid? No, it was nowhere to be found. So when we went to justify to David, the new mayor, that where they were short for the city of Northampton, he was floored. He was just floored that the one and one didn't make two anyway. And we're still going. If I could just interrupt you, please. It was fascinating, and I've, and I've followed this in the newspapers over the yeah. years. We're really just focused on your conversation. conversation. And, and, and we, have, we have a member that needs to get out of here yeah, in 10 okay. minutes, and there are a couple more items I want to get to, but I want yeah. to thank you guys for coming. Were there any other questions that, that we had? Um, Did Oliver mention what we should address compensation by in his will? So the tractor and the horse? Yeah. 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 Actually, just one more question. Just, just quickly, if you would. Um, sounds like there are, in a sense, two masters. That you work, you're working for the, the will and the provisions of the will as a, a, in addition to the city. Sure. So how does that mesh with decisions being made and so forth? Not easily. Oh. Especially the history of the academy and Smith College. It almost sounds like here at this library as well, because mm -hmm. there's a separate board of trustees. Right here at this library, but it's also city funded as well. So it's kind of like one of those uh, hybrid kind of organizations. The is unique. Todd, I want to thank you. I've never met you before uh, when I did get your email inviting us here. I want to thank you and, and, and everybody. Uh, do I need a raise? So we're we have a new crew that is in uh, on board. We fire some new people. You're going to see the school blossom in regards to. If you go to the Three County Fair, we have a, a barn that was donated to us by the Three County Fair, and all our things are going to be in there from flowers and cattle and trucks and tractors and and you know body shop and carpentry. So I mean, take a look at it. But what I want to do is, is invite all of you, and especially you, Tom, to one of our meetings to come sit in the audience and, and watch it in action because it, it, it is, you know, we get things done. It's not, we don't play to the cameras. You will not see any cameras in our meetings. Uh, and, and the thing is that we, we go in with a timetable to get in, to get out, but we accomplish all our business. Great man. Good stuff. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Yes. Good to see you again. Great. Thank you. So, Jennifer had said um, that she needs to be moving out. Unfortunately, I have to do about a quarter hour. Yeah. Okay. But, um, well, the, the next item, I guess this is any other, uh, I guess this is it in terms of things um, uh, why don't we move to the next item, which is the presentation of your data. Right. Discussion, so, don't worry. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm actually further encouraged by hearing, you know, the different thoughts that they have about what could be looked at. I mean, like the length of, me the length of meeting time, structure of the city council, and support staff, and I like all of that. I mean, I guess I feel like I'd like to round out what we know just economically. Okay. That's the vision. 
I actually really agree with you. I think it would be really hard to gather the data. But even if we could find like one counselor in each town to kind of just give five or ten minutes on the phone and answer those kinds of questions, like you know, generally we have these many meetings. And, um, but I know according to Dennis, it sounds like it's just really hard to get information from the towns. But I think it would be interesting because to me that's not even. I mean, it is qualitative, but it's. Well, don't direct a report that a city clerk has is very concrete. Well, that's what I'm saying. All of this is like how many hours you spend a month. That's, yeah. that's yeah. pretty concrete. Kind of you get paid the same amount, but one of you is putting in 20 more hours than the other. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that'd be really valuable that. I mean, the conversation I have with, with going forward with that is that I really have to know what towns and cities we want to right. narrow it down right. to. Right. I, I think I stuck with the nine that had been chosen for this work. And I could do that the same for the, the following nine. But after hearing um, from Mr. Specter tonight, does anyone, are people's thoughts changing about what towns and cities we look at? Um. Let me make a suggestion that we defer that um, discussion until, I think this was sort of an information gathering uh, meeting. Um, Dennis isn't here, I'm wishing as this comes up that he was here because he could advise us as to, yeah, I could get that data, or you could get it, or that's going to be impossible to get in the sort of time frame we're looking at. Um, we've got a meeting next week, next Thursday. Yeah, yeah, next Thursday. For the, and I'm not sure, I, I sent a uh, notice to the Gazette and uh, to the calendar and also to the editors with a little press release saying we're having a meeting uh, to seek through public input. We'll see who shows up. But I'll add as an agenda item, hopefully Ned Dennis will be there and we can sort of reopen this discussion with him next week. Does that sound like a mm -hmm. sure. plan? Yes, yeah, um, so only what I will say to that end though is, you know, I think we've, Dennis has made it pretty clear we can't really hit people up for any more stuff. Okay, but just in terms of advising whether that would be how best to go about right. gathering that kind of information. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. So I'm thinking we might have to go through a different avenue, which is not to call the town, but to maybe literally reach out to some of the counselors, you know, or school committee members or whatever. Just a thought. But yeah, we can ask them that question. Yeah, I, I don't think this data exists. I doubt it exists, but it is going to have to gather. Yeah, exactly. Piece by piece. Is there anything, any other questions or comments, suggestions about the benchmarking uh, data that Jennifer provided? We're just going to put add that to our pile and go through that, uh, discuss it. Uh, and, uh, make our okay. um, well, great. Then I guess that's it. I don't have any other items. I'll I'll put out and I'll put together an agenda for next week's meeting. I'll include another you know, discussion of benchmarking data. Um, I'll also email Dennis and uh, get his advice on that in case he's not there. Uh, and at least we'll have a plan for the next week. So is our plan to have a brief open, if people show up, open comment section and then close in and do business? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, we can do it any way, any way you like. I, I think the, the way that this worked with the charter is people came and, and there wasn't a strict time limit. Um, uh, people were allowed to speak their piece. We were able to ask them questions. There was a give and take. Um, and depending on who shows up, uh, we'll try to just move the meeting along. Um, but that, well, the only reason I ask, I just think we also have a lot of actual work to do, too. Okay. So okay. Well, I, either we limit it or we agree to meet a little longer next okay. time. I think, yeah, certainly we can limit it. Um, three minutes seems a little draconian, but generally when it goes over five minutes, or if it sort of veers off topic, um, I think I'll we'll have to sort of steer them, yeah, steer them all. Yep. Um, but yeah, we can we can dedicate then more time to um, to discuss both the benchmarking data. I think another question we need to, to um, address is how we want to go about deliberating and making proposals. Um, and that's, we've got all, we've got a stack of data we're going to need to figure out what to do with it. And I don't have a clear idea um, how to go about doing that. I'm sure everyone has strong opinions as to what should be weighed and what shouldn't be weighed. Um, so if you guys can think a bit about process, and then we can discuss that again next week. So then we'll have a full month to review the data on our own, and we'll at least have a process in October, that first week in October, that we can move forward. Maybe if we talk about this, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm wondering why it never came up. Do we have any answers? Job descriptions for each position? It's funny, I was thinking of 
appreciate asking Paul that tonight. Um, and then I forgot to do that. I am curious, like, I what? Find out, yeah. You know, is it a chart or is it a job description? Like, how do they know what the expectations? Because he kept saying what you really have to do. And maybe there isn't one. I would guess yeah. Midway has one, but I would guess the other people. Right, don't. because otherwise, why are some people saying it's a full time job? And some people are saying. Well, Glenn should you know. be able to provide us with that, I would think. If part there is a city, yeah. There is a city. Yeah. 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 Ye